Good morning. We are spending the next week living with the Chevrolet Colorado ZR2. Now, I've already driven the regular trims of the latest generation Colorado, but the ZR2 is the top tier, most off-road focused one. So I'm looking forward to sharing with you guys what it's like to live with the latest mid-size ZR2 from Chevrolet. Here it is in the driveway. I'm gonna go ahead, remote start, double click. That big turbo four cylinder fires up. I'll let the truck warm up. Quick exterior walk around. It's in this yellowish gold color. ZR2 graphics on the side of the bed. It's got a pretty hefty suspension lift, bigger tires. All right, let's head off to work. I am a big fan of the welcome sequence across the digital cluster and the main infotainment screen. It fades into the Chevrolet logo. That's always a cool touch. Engine on, heated seat. Whew. It's getting chilly. It is nice that you get the full width cluster on the ZR2 version. Unfortunately, lower tier trim ones, the screen does not go the entire width of this opening here, which was one of my pet peeves when I was driving the regular Colorado. But for the ZR2, you get the full digital cluster. Quite impressed with the Bose sound system in the ZR2. No, this is not supposed to be some crazy top of the line luxury truck, but man, not bad for the Bose. When the sun hits the paint, you can really see how much metallic flake there is. Quite a bit, look at that. It's not my favorite shade of yellowish gold. If I was ordering a ZR2, I'd probably get the blue. I like the dark blue a lot, but this does match the Multimatic shocks down there, the Multimatic DSSV. You can see the dampers. Welcome to winter, where it's pretty much completely nighttime at 5 p.m. Remote start of the truck, warm it up a little bit. This thing has some pretty aggressive fender flares. It's wide. It's also pretty far off the ground. Extra suspension lift. You see the rock rails there on the side. I'm gonna throw my backpack in the back seat. And we're heading off to dinner. I'm 6'3 and I gotta like step up into this. If you're short, there's no side step. I guess you could try to use the rock rail, but it's not, it's not very big. So if you're vertically challenged, this truck might be hard for you to get into. Something else I've had a couple people say is this truck looks like a toy truck. I think the fact that it's yellow does help, but it's the creases, the angles, the like the proportions. It does look like a little toy truck and it's fun. It's it's a fun off-road toy, really. That's what the ZR2 is for. I'm really, it's growing on me. Uh, I like the flow tie up front with the red accents. So you see that is open. And the ZR2 badge with the red accents, the blacked out grill, but also you get body color here. We have the skid plate beneath with tow hooks. You can see the multi-matic shocks actually right there. And it is really cool how it matches the paint. These fender pieces flare out. They're just black plastic quite a lot to cover those bigger 33 inch tires. This one does not have the bead lock capable wheels. That was an option for like the really aggressive one, but cool little details. You see the ZR2 etched there on the actual wheel itself. Plenty of ground clearance, those rock rails I mentioned on the side, and just, yeah, a lot of angles. The way the fender comes out here, it creases in here to the door. The door has some sculpting. And then as this line continues here into the bed, here, same flared out rear wheel arches there. ZR2 badging. And then, open this up. This has the uh, pretty clever storage compartment inside. Ooh little bits of tree it's supposed to be like sealed so if you want to put tools or beverages in there I've changed up the cluster slightly so this is like the minimalistic view because earlier when I was showing it to you guys it was on which view oh nope, that's uh wait it was this one but like this is the most cluttered view because you have the trip computer in the middle, you got your tachometer speedometer, and it looked like the lane thing is actually overlapping one of the temperature gauges, I think it might be transmission. So like this is very cluttered, but if you hit the steering wheel button, this goes to the full Google Maps. This is built-in Google Maps navigation. This one is pretty cool. That must be a little friction circle bubble, I think. And then your tachometer here, more off-road info. This is the more intensive offer one you pitch and roll angle you have your transfer case status temps and stuff like that uh this is the minimalistic one which i've been driving around on the road still pretty basic you have your diff differentials down there for high for low whatever uh where's the right here drive modes are here you can change from too high for high for low auto and then if you turn this it changes drive modes you get the really cool 
graphics. These are very nice graphics. There's Normal, there's Baja, there's Terrain, there's Tow Hall, Off-Road, back to Normal. So we've got these really nice graphics on the new Colorado. The GMC AT4X also had the really cool ones. Parking brake, transmission selector, my sunglasses case, that's a wireless charging port there. I plugged my phone in. You can run wireless CarPlay too. We have actual physical toggles, which is very nice. Locking differentials, front and rear. This is auto stop start, hazards, lane keep, aux power, so we got one. And then uh, this must be global windows down. Yep. Dropping the windows. It's actually not too, 57 degrees. It was like 30 the other day. I'm not gonna complain. Climate, we have cooled seats, heated seats. And then the screen. Yeah, there we go. Couple things I'm already reminded of as soon as I hop back into the Colorado, the size. Much more manageable size than Silverado, Sierra, or the bigger class of trucks, right? More compact dimensions. The 2.7 liter turbocharged four cylinder is, is good, like on paper, right? It makes a lot of torque, more power and torque than some of the outgoing options. And for, I think even more than the V6, right? It's like 310 horsepower, 430 pound-feet of torque, because the ZR2 gets the top tier output. So that's a lot of torque. It was like designed like a diesel. It's not the most refined feeling engine. I mean, it's a very large displacement turbocharged four cylinder, but it's proven to be solid. I mean, it's in the Silverados, it's in the Colorados now, the GMC models too. Um, so no complaints, but I don't absolutely love it. Um, it just does its stuff really well. Um, it rides well. I have the, as with all these off-road trucks and SUVs, you just go drive over wherever. I don't worry about potholes. I don't worry about railroad crossings, things I would slow down for, like small speed bumps or whatever. I can just go, I would just continue driving. So that is always a very nice feeling, even when you're not like hardcore off-roading. With that, we're gonna head home, um, eat some dinner, relax for a little bit tonight, and we'll pick this back up either later tonight or tomorrow. I haven't decided yet, we'll see. Colorado ZR2, cold start. <laughs> Not the most uh, appealing noise, but it's a noise. We have a full-size spare down here. Oh, it's really dark. Let's make it closer. Right there. There is a full-size spare in case you accidentally pop a tire off-roading or something. With the bigger tires and the suspension lift, you got pretty good clearance and therefore visibility, commanding view over pretty much everything else out there, including other trucks too. See other crossovers and SUVs and stuff for scale. I like the little ZR2 badge here on the dash. And you see that almost like kind of forged carbon camo-y texture. Oh, look, Steve is calling me. Hi, Steve. You're on, oh, that is loud. What are you doing? Oh my God, that is loud. All right. Back of the truck all loaded up. That's, that's a gift. That's not for me. Some groceries. Nice. The bright yellow color does make this very easy to find in the parking lot. It definitely stands out in the sea of boring gray, silver, white cars. This hood is pretty aggressive too. The two-tone, kind of satin black finish with the painted. A lot of curves you can see when you're inside. Oh, there's a little valet tag left here. I wonder how long that's been there. That is, that is very wet. <laughs> the seats back here do fold up like that, which could give you a little bit more storage space here. See, under the seat, there is this like structure and that's like the emergency jack. Looks like a front license plate, various stuff, but gives you a little bit more practicality. You'll notice the left side here is quite empty because almost all the controls are now in the touchscreen. So you're like your headlight controls. There's a little shortcut there for you to turn off auto, just the uh, like parking lights and then headlights on manually. So at least there's a shortcut there. The first time I got into Colorado, I was like, Am I, am I dumb? Where, where are the where are the buttons? Where are the controls? So everything is there. Your diff locks would be here. Your four wheel drive select is here, drive modes. So yeah, there's not much here on the left side. Cleans it up a little bit. Air vents are pretty cool. The circular theme that a lot of uh, Chevy vehicles have now from the new Blazer EV, Camaro had these. I like the actual physical temperature toggles here along with your other climate settings. And again, that Interesting, there's not really much of a, te oh, they feel a little bit of texture there. It's like textured plastic. It's got an interesting like camo effect to it there. Nice leather, fake leather trim with the yellow stitching. The materials are overall pretty nice, especially at this price point. I mean, soft touch there, even on the door. The seats are pretty nice, heated and cooled. Leather here, we've got a 
sunroof there, slides open. It's not bad. My biggest complaint with the Colorado ZR2 is the powertrain doesn't feel special enough. I keep thinking about something like the Bronco Raptor, which I assume the Ranger Raptor will feel relatively similar, similar class and intent of a more off-road focused vehicle. And the three liter EcoBoost V6, it's not the best engine in the world, but it's more. It does make more power and just a tiny bit more torque. This 2.7 Turbo 4 does make pretty impressive torque at 430. I think the Bronco Raptor was 400, 18 horsepower and 440 pound-feet of torque, but it's more so a more potent feeling powertrain um, and this one this four-cylinder is a little coarse feeling It just doesn't add the extra oomph on top that you would want for kind of a more halo um, Kind of inspirational off-road toy Everything else, I mean, about this thing, I think it looks pretty cool. Not in this color, I do a different color. The interior is nice. I like the stance and road presence. It definitely has the capability. Now, again, like I said, have an off-road of the Colorado ZR2, but it did a bunch in the GMC AT4X and their platform siblings, right? Powertrain and capability and everything. And we even tried out the AEV edition of the AT4X and it was phenomenal. It was a great size, a much smaller package and footprint for climbing up trails. We were in Montana and went to almost like uh, 8,500 feet and it was a ton of fun. Now, the 35s do make a big improvement over the 33s, which is what this also has, um, but I was definitely impressed with the capability, handled everything really well. This one doesn't have like the underbody camera, which you can option on this. You get the kind of the more aggressive version, but even in this form, the ZR2, I'm really liking using this day-to-day -day driving and so forth, but just needs more powertrain. Needs needs something a little more special. That seems to be a theme with some of the Chevy off-road vehicles. You look at the Silverado ZR2. They don't they don't go up to the level of the Raptor or the TRX even. They just they could have. They could have thrown a supercharged LT4 into the Silverado ZR2 or whatever they wanted to call it and have themselves a genuine Raptor R competitor, TRX competitor, but they're always kind of in the middle, right? It goes up against a, a Ram Rebel, uh, the Ford Tremor or something like that, right? Pretty nice high definition cameras. You have the overhead view, got the front camera there, Let the park we go, but we don't have the underbody camera on this one. No, I don't need a vehicle update. It's been asking about an over there update for a while. All right, I've done 222 miles, averaging 17 and a half MPG. That is mostly uh, city driving, not much highway. 111 miles to empty. We're gonna have to fill up today. It looks like a third of a tank. So about 300, 350 miles on a full tank. Thirteen point seven gallons later, back up to three hundred fifty five miles of range. And now Home Depot. Whoa. Take your Maserati to Home Depot day? That's an interesting choice. <laughs> Got the back seat loaded up again, folded up both sides. Practical enough. Bed is still a bit wet. Don't want those boxes getting too wet. Also, check out this thing. This looks fun. Two-door Bronco and eruption green on the steel wheels with some goodies. Look at that. This guy probably, hopefully, uses his truck, his Bronco off-road. Kind of sad I can't take the Colorado off-road. This week didn't have an opportunity for anything. So we're just living with it in the real world, using it as like a daily driver truck. But hey, before you start complaining, there's enough potholes around here that I can test. <laughs> no, but it is nice being able to drive wherever I want and not worry about anything. Suspension, tires, whatever, right? You just kind of go when it's all good. Let's see what this turbo four-cylinder can do. Ooh, a bit of rev hang. A lot of torque though, but you can see it sounds kind of coarse. It's a harsh engine. I remember hearing from the engineers when we first drove the Colorado about how they designed this engine to almost be like diesel-like. They were very proud in the durability and the features to ensure that it would handle towing, off-roading, and just miles and miles. So there were a lot of special things done for this large displacement Turbo 4. And it was initially designed for the Colorado, but initially tested out essentially in the Silverado, right? It was in the Silverado 1500 as an option for a bigger truck. And if it did well in the big truck, it would do even better in a smaller truck less weight and less size. We've got a digital window sticker here for this truck. So it's a 2023 Colorado ZR2 in nitro yellow metallic. 
Base price for the ZR2 is 46800 It's got a couple option packages. The convenience package 3, we've got the sunroof, technology package, the audio system, the nitro yellow paint for a total of $4,300 in options, which means as option we are at 52630 which actually in today's day and age where everything's getting so expensive, it's not terrible i mean some people are going to complain and say that's so much for a mid-sized truck that's how much a silverado should be but take a look at modern day pricing everything is pretty pricey and i like this thing um this is one of the first times where i've seen city 16 highway 60 combined 16 where the mpg is the same regardless if you're doing city highway or combined so actually my 17 point something is actually not bad but that's funny. Usually highway obviously is, is higher, um, but I assume maybe the tires and aerodynamic inefficiencies uh, for an off-road kind of truck do that. So there's a quick look at the window sticker for this ZR2. Final thoughts wrapping up living with the Colorado ZR2. Just like with the Canyon, the AT4X, a little different trims of that, and the Colorado. It's a nice mid-sized truck. Silverados, anything in that segment, F-150, the Ram 1500, they're getting bigger and bigger, right? So parking, garage space, everything like that. Like, they're just massive. So it's a nice size here. As the off-road focused one, it does have more hardware, but like I said, it's not like the full-out balls to the wall for that. Maybe try out the Bison. I, I was talking to uh, one of our friends from Chevy. I was like, hey, I should try the Bison sometime and actually take it off-roading and do that. So this was a more day-to-day -day normal living with where it's a it's a nice size. It's got some good tech creature comforts. I, I like it. I like it. This competes with the Tacoma TRD Pro, which I haven't driven the new gen yet. And I'm sure the Ranger Raptor will be a competitor, but I think that's going to be a little bit of a step up in my opinion. So with that, we'll conclude this video living with the Colorado ZR2. Make sure you check out my first drive of the regular Colorado trims. And of course the GMC, uh, those drives, we took the AT4X, pretty hardcore off-roading with the AV edition ones too. That was a ton of fun if you're looking for something more extreme stress trucks like this hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching